Welcome to Widow Too Soon. This is Mark Massaro. I am here with my friend and co-host Michelle Bader. Michelle, what's up? I am doing okay. <laughs> yeah, How are what's you? been going? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. What's but what's been going on with you? Well, you know, tell last, us about the drama. Yeah, let me tell you. Remember last week I shared in our anxiety episode um, about COVID hitting our house. Right. So we know so, that's still got to be going on. It is. Yeah. But good news. Um, Peyton gets to go back to school tomorrow. Oh, good. So we're happy about that. And just try. Is he to- happy about that? Kind of. He's okay. kind of. I mean, he is because we like not only do we quarantine, we isolate it. So he hasn't mm. left his room. Um, tonight at midnight, officially, he's supposed to be not contagious, so he can leave the room. <laughs> but nice. like literally, I he only goes to the bathroom, and then I bring him all his food and like everything. So it's been a, like all consuming <laughs> to mm. be getting food and like doing all this stuff, and then fighting the anxiety. You know, I've had to listen to our podcast to help. <laughs> nice. Really, I did. I've done that too. <laughs> yeah. Past. And so it kind of, it helped with that. And um, yeah, so I, I don't have a lot to share because that's pretty all consuming when you're dealing with that. And I haven't left the house except for yeah. COVID tests and that's about it. So yeah, it's a little hard to share uh, when you've been quarantined. I don't, you know, I've been working on. Um, Tell us about the TV shows you've been watching. Yeah, nope, don't really have any. <laughs> no, I'm, okay. Well, I watched some Hallmark movies. I got the Hallmark Channel for four ninety nine a month or five ninety nine. You got sold it, on that? I saw that on Facebook. I do it every year. Yeah. It's oh, so do good. you? Okay. I, oh, I didn't know favorite. that was like a thing. Oh, it's so awesome. I yeah, I did it last year and I'm doing it this year, so that was good. That's I've awesome. Been trying to like, I still have boxes in my closet. I'm aiming to get to them. I haven't yet. Um, but I've spent a lot of time, um, working on my speaker profile. I'm trying to get that all up and going so I can start speaking and I've done some stuff at the podcast with YouTube, a few things here or there, but I, when I look back at my day, I'm like, what did I do? I mean, it's mostly (laughs) taking care of kids and getting them what they need and all that stuff. So for someone not on COVID restrictions, what have you been up to? Uh, well, you know, I'm. I, I feel I feel bad because I haven't been on COVID restrictions. I haven't had a whole lot um, going on that I can think of to share. Um, I mean, I got a new car, which is awesome. That is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, just I'm just homeschooling the kids and I'm mm-hmm. um, just getting stuff done around the house. Nothing too exciting unless you want me to hear about unless you want to hear about um, scrubbing counters or doing laundry. Um, I don't think it's that's really, really exciting. What, so what you know, let me do. Let me tell you about this load of laundry I did. It was great. It was I washed great. it, then I dried it, then I put it away. No, that is fascinating. Our listeners yeah. love it. Love no, it. just just doing life. No, no big, uh, you know, things to, to talk about that I can think of. You know, been going to church and stuff like that, which is always great. I get to go mm-hmm. on Wednesday nights now. Yeah. Um, because I'm not working right now, and so that's been uh, actually really nice to be able to go on Wednesday nights. But for some reason, I'm still used to my sleep schedule. Oh, so I feel so bad. But like every Wednesday night at church, I'm like struggling <laughs> to stay awake. And it's not yeah. that my pastor is amazing; he right. gives really good messages. But I don't know what it is. I just get so sleepy, and I feel mm-hmm. like you know. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so that's been going on, which is well. And I did want to correct you on one thing. You said you're not working. Um, You're a single dad. You're working hard every day, indeed, and you're homeschooling. Yes, thank you. you. I am definitely working. Um, I'm not the type to just sit around. No. Um, Well, (laughs) don't get me wrong. I like sitting around. I like (laughs) relaxing. However, um, I just feel like. I know I'm going to feel so much better about myself at night and be able to relax if I got a lot of stuff done. Me too. Yeah. It's just, yeah, you know, I just, uh, I can't just sit around all day and not feel guilty about it. So Mm -hmm. um, been trying to get out and walk the dogs more now, which is cool because like I've mentioned in other podcasts where we live, it's really hot in the summer. um, You can't take the dogs out for walks. It's pretty sad. Mm -hmm. Poor dogs. They have to, they're like, why did you guys move here? But, um, <laughs> you know, literally the pavement's like too hot. And then because I was working, I wasn't able to take them out even at night. Yeah. Um, Cause it doesn't, it doesn't even cool off. I mean, it cools off enough, but it doesn't even cool off enough until around 9 PM. I mean, wow. I've had times where I've left for work at three 30 in the morning and it's 95 degrees out or whatever. It's mm. hard Mm-mm. to imagine, but <laughs> I'm like super early in the morning and I got the a- AC going in the car. So Um, yeah. So anyways, it's cooled off a lot. It's really nice now. It's just beautiful weather every day. And so uh, I've been taking the dogs out and stuff, but 
anyways, so that's the super exciting stuff going on in my world, walking dogs and doing laundry and homeschooling kids. I'm finally starting to get the hang of homeschooling the kids, which is nice. There's a lot to it. Yeah. Um, good. But, uh, so yeah, so today's episode, we are talking about something where we are going to be, um, pretty vulnerable and talking about, cause we have, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people that listen and, um, you know, so we just want to be delicate with it, but it is a topic about dating. Mm-hmm. And what's that title? That topic or that title is that dating is not a four letter word. It's not a bad word. Right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that title? Okay, well, it came from my book, Widow Goals, which I'm working on. Of course, I'll tell you all about it when it's ready. Um, And so I actually wrote it about a year ago. Um, But since then, I have learned a lot. (laughs) But basically, what I want people to get from this episode is that if you decide to start dating, and everybody's timeline is different when that is, there's no right or wrong time, I want you to not feel guilty. I don't want you to think it takes away from the love that you had for your spouse because that love will always remain there. And it doesn't mean you love any less. I actually just explained this on a TikTok like a couple of days ago. I think we talked about it in the last episode too, but basically when you decide to love again, okay, so you've got your love for your spouse, that's not going to change. And then you love someone else. It's like when you have one kid, you think you can't love them anymore, right? They're like, oh, that's so, we've talked about this before. And then you have another kid and your heart expands. And I feel like that's what it will be. For me, it's a will be because I'm not there yet. Um, Will be when I fall in love again. Like I will always love Luke for sure. And you will always love Lacey, but there is room in our hearts. God can help our hearts expand. And so I feel like this is one of the most privately talked about subjects among widows and widowers, but the least publicly talked about it. And um, it's taken us a while to get to a place where we're comfortable publicly talking about it, but I think it's time. I think it's time to shed some light on this. This is not a shameful thing. This is not a bad thing. God created us for companionship and to desire that. And so there's nothing wrong with you. I don't care if it's been a month, six months, a year, 10 years, 15 years. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to want to date again. And so today we're just going to be just kind of going through like what experiences we've had and um, just talking about it. So Mark, would you like to start? Spotlights on me. (laughs) So, yeah, so it's, it's been an interesting road. Um, I am currently dating someone and she's amazing and I will get into that, but it's, it's hard because mm-hmm. there's so many triggers that make it difficult. For one, I, I battled guilt for a long time. Yeah. I, I didn't, I just couldn't um, feel like I was doing the right thing. It just felt wrong. I just missed Lacey. I wanted Lacey. And um, I just couldn't let, let go of that. And I still haven't completely let go of that. But um, there was a time when I thought I was ready after, I don't know, maybe five or six months. I don't know how long it was, but, um, because I was lonely and it's, it's hard to explain to somebody. And a lot of people might think that that was too soon. And, you know, a lot of people that didn't know me would have questioned my love for Lacey if I was ready to date someone so Mm -hmm. quickly. Um, but a couple of things on that, uh, I I lost Lacey as a wife long before she passed away. Yep. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to say because that hurt her to, to admit that or to realize that it was kind of her that brought it to my attention. And, um, I never accepted that she was always my bride, you know? And so that was, that was, but that that's the truth. And I didn't really understand that until she passed that like, yeah, we didn't have any kind of relationship for a long time other than me taking care of her. I mean, we did, we still shared a lot and laughed a lot, but Anyways, back to what I was saying. So after about five or six months, I thought I was ready. And I joined Christian Mingle. Christian the, uh, Mingle. The... <laughs> Isn't that like some kind of jingle? Like a Christian Mingle. Mingle bells. Mingle. mingle. Bells. <laughs> Mark, Anyways. <Marcy> mingle. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's a good so <laughs> I, was, I was on there. And it was really interesting. I, I kind of got um, scared off of it because... As I was scrolling through all these pictures, 
I noticed that I was looking for Lacey mm. and that's a really, mm. it was a really weird thing to admit yeah. to myself, mm-hmm. but I was, once I realized that, I mean, I don't even know how to, I mean, that was, you know, almost a year ago now. So I don't even really know how to express what that felt like. Um, but I just remember that I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm on here looking for Lacey. This is mm-hmm. weird. And, um, so I, I backed off of it and then, I don't know, maybe a month later, again, I was really lonely and just, I missed having a wife and cause that's part of it, right. Is that right. You're, you not only miss your spouse, but you right. miss being married. You miss having yeah. a spouse. And again, I thought I was ready for it and I got on there and um, I just felt convicted by God that not that it was wrong, right. but that that wasn't mm-hmm. his plan of how I was going to meet somebody. Mm-hmm. And um, I felt a very strong conviction to stop looking and that he's going to bring her to me. Mm-hmm. And um, so fast forward to today, um, this girl that I'm dating now is also widowed, crazy mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. And wow. um, she approached me. And she, she pursued me and I was reluctant for a while and I wasn't sure what I wanted and, you know, broke it off a couple of times because it was too difficult for me. It was difficult at, at different times for many different reasons. Um, sometimes it was, it was hard seeing her with my kids. It felt wrong. It felt like this is Lacey's role. Yeah. And that was one of the the reasons, but there were, um, there are many others along the way, but I wanted to give you a chance to, um, share some of your encounters, if you will, if you've had mm-hmm. any, I'm sure you've had some. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So I shared a little bit in counterfeit comfort, um, that I literally like woke up one day, like four or five months after Luke passed away, I was like, I could talk to men. And that's kind of how it started for me. I was still in a place where like the first, you know, conversation I had with someone, it was just a text conversation. I felt guilty. Like, I remember that very strongly. This isn't my husband, <laughs> you know? And mm. it was just, just chatting. It wasn't even like, he wanted to call me. I wouldn't let him. Like, I just was just texting. I'm like, Nope, I will only text with you. <laughs> and, um, just that feeling, you know, so some of you might be in that right now, that feeling of guilt. And just like you, I had what's called anticipatory grief. So Mm. I knew Luke was dying. And so you do a lot of pre-grieving. I know um, some of you on here who your spouse has passed away from cancer or something that's a long disease. You probably went through the same thing. And so sometimes those who have anticipatory grief um, actually, you know, are ready sooner than others because they've been grieving it you know, a sudden death, I think would be a little bit harder. I mean, I don't know. I'm not judging anybody. You do what's right for you. Like nobody can tell you, no one can tell you it's the right or wrong time. As what my counselor says, it's like super personal. Your grief is personal to you. And, um, so it was around that time period where I just started kind of like chatting and making friends. That was my first step is like, I, I haven't even really had guy friends in 17 years, you know, and that was a new experience. I mean, you were one of my first close friends and, you know, just getting to like, have that camaraderie with someone who have so much in common and just like, Oh, like it's, it's fun to talk to a man and there's nothing wrong with that. Like for both single, you know, just having that experience of, um, just getting to like, see what that's like again, just kind of like dipping your toes back in the water, you know, and, um, just experiencing that it's okay to feel again and to, to have those emotions. Cause it started with just like talking to people and then like feelings being awakened and, um, just being at a place to know that's okay. Even that's okay. Like mm-hmm. each step of the way, you're taking a little bit more of a step, a little bit more of a step. And, um, you know, I learned through the process of like your friendship and just kind of what we went through that it's okay to feel again and it's okay. And that it doesn't mean that's kind of when I realized it, that it doesn't mean that I loved Luke any less. Like I still had that, that same, love for him. Um, and in the process of getting to know you and like, you know, starting to have feelings, but we lived in different places, you know, that Mm. didn't work out, but we became like super good friends. And through that process, I, it was a huge part of my healing journey to know it's okay. It's okay to, there's nothing wrong with it. Like 
the first time I mentioned to my son that I was actually, when I was talking to you, um, he kind of like, he got really angry and he was like, you, you can't talk to guys. <laughs> like, like you wouldn't do that when you're married. I'm like, well, I'm not married now, you know? Mm-hmm. And he went through like a really hard time. That's for me. And we talked about this a little bit in, um, grief with kids or whatever the episode was. It's really hard, especially for older kids. I know it's different with younger kids. Like that was part of the hardest part for me is like, he's like, it's wrong. Daddy wouldn't do that. I'm like, well, I would hope he would. I would want him to be happy. And, um, I also had to realize, like, I went through a lot of guilt in the beginning that Luke in his perfect state in heaven, like would not be jealous of me talking to a man. Right. Yeah. But, but if he was here on earth, obviously that would be a different story. And so it was just this shifting of the mindset and like, So you were part of this journey to where I'm like, okay, it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to, to go forward in life. And then from there, um, I just kind of like started dating a little bit, like through mutual friends and had some really interesting (laughs) experiences, which I'm sure any of you who have done any kind of online dating or dating through friends have had where you're like, where am I? who is this person? (laughs) And I can laugh about them now and to spare people's, you know, details. I won't share all of it, but there were some interesting characters out there. Um, Mm. and it was part of my journey. Like, I don't regret it. I got to know lots of different people. Um, and I think the key was like, I was looking for someone who would be okay that I'm a widow. Like none of them were widows. And so some were weird about it. Some Mm you know, like it it was definitely a strange thing that some of them were very sensitive. Um, some were not. And, um, just also in this journey, learning who I am as a single person, like, okay, I'm not married. I'm transitioning into single. And for the first, you know, four months, I didn't want to date. I thought I would never date again. I remember that feeling. And there's people that are five years down the road and they don't want to date, And that's okay. So I want you to know you are okay. Like if you yeah. don't want to date again, yep. you may never want to. There are widows who stay, they love their singleness. They don't ever want to get married again. I do, you know, and mm-hmm. that's been hard even recently talking to my son um, about marriage. And like, he's like, why would you want to get married? You had a great marriage. You had daddy. Why would you ever want to get married again? And I'm like, because God created us for this companionship. And I'm like, you guys are all going to be grown up in four and a half years. Like, I don't want to be the cat lady alone. I don't even have cats. <laughs> I have a dog, but you know, but you could get them. I could get cats. <laughs> and like, you know, I'm just in my house with my 18 cats. Like, oh my gosh, what's that show? Um, Hoarders. Have you ever oh, seen? Yeah. yeah. And then they yes. have the cat ladies and they have uh-huh. the cat poop and all the stuff. And I don't want to be that. So, <laughs> so that's my fear. <laughs> I don't necessarily think, uh, that you can equate not dating with okay, being on I'm orders. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> I get just, what you're saying. Yeah, I, don't I totally get that. what you're saying. That <laughs> show is fascinating, by the way. Yes, but I don't want to, I wouldn't want to be that. And so I went through some of these experiences and um, got to know a lot of people, which was very interesting. And along the way, I'm like, I like this. I don't like this, uh, you know, and, and my kids like, no. And I remember when someone came to my house to pick me up for, um, I guess a date kind of, um, just hanging out and they thought it was weird. I came home and my oldest was like, that was so weird. Like, it was just, I think I talked about this in another episode. Um, so for me, considering the kids feelings along the way has yeah. been a huge thing where I don't necessarily tell them every time, but I'm mm-hmm. like hanging out with someone and they've never met anyone except for the one guy. And they knew him from church from a long time ago. So they've only met one guy, which is good. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be bringing like a lot of people in and out of their lives. <laughs> They're all, which like, one is this? <laughs> right. They might call them the wrong name. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that anyways, is it is funny. Um, so now I'm in a place where I've developed a really strong friendship, um, with actually someone that I went to college with and total surprise reconnected through social media. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and <laughs> get to put in a little plug. Um, and just what's so great is in order to build a friendship, a relationship, like we have to talk, we're long distance. He lives far, far away. Mm. And, um, like really far. 
and you have to talk to build this relationship. And so what it's done for me is just built like a really strong, and he's a really strong Christian, like built this like strong base friendship before we even go to the next level. So right now we're just like really good friends, just exploring that. Um, but it's been really fun and he is going to come to visit. And so that's why I've had to talk with the kids a little bit and they're a little bit leery. My daughter's amazing. She always says, I just want you to be happy. Mm, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And the boys are more like, I've, I've had the same talk with them. Like, you guys know, this doesn't mean I love daddy any less. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, is this weird for you? And they're all, both were like, yeah, this is really weird. The thing is though, is it wasn't our choice. That's, exactly. that's what I kind of learned to um, become okay with, because for a while, for me, there were a lot of things that I was, um, even though my in-laws have been amazing, I, I didn't want them to feel disrespected in any way. And so mm -hmm. that was a big thing for oh, me that was like hinging yes. on, you know, whether I was ready or not. And not that, you know, not that I was waiting for their permission or anything like that, of course, because they're not like that. But I don't know. I just didn't want it to be uncomfortable or for them to feel like I was just moving on from her and that right. they weren't going to be part of my life anymore right. or whatever. But um, so that was that was important to me. And so it was really uncomfortable for me, but I, I'm a pretty open person. But to um, to tell my mother-in-law that I was dating somebody was important to me to mm -hmm. say, because I didn't want to feel, I didn't want her to find out from somebody else. Right. I felt like that would have been disrespectful, but um, you know, it was, even though she's been very, very good to me and very, um, she even told me recently that um, she wants us to be happy, that she wants the best for us. And, mm, I love and that, yeah. that, that there's no, there is, she said the same thing you said, that there's no time limit on this. There's yep. no right time. And right. Um, something I've learned is that all the feelings that I've been going through, um, it's, there's, there's a lot of things. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people relate to this is that um, I, and I'm going to say was because I kind of hit this breakthrough, but I was very afraid to love somebody again. I was very mm. afraid to fall in love again. Right. I was very afraid to lose somebody again. Um, you know, Lacey was half of my life almost. Right. And we were writing this beautiful book together and it just stopped with no ending. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was like everything we built, everything we had learned about each other, all the ins and outs and the idiosyncrasies and just the, the way that we had just become one, um, was just over and yeah. so like abruptly in the scheme of things. And so it was hard. It was hard to, uh, you know, it was hard to let myself feel like it was okay. And I was actually, I've started grief counseling. Like I told you, that's so awesome. I was yeah. talking about this in my last uh, session, if you will, that like, it's scary for me. And, um, you know, he said that's perfectly normal. Um, just so anybody, if you're curious, that's totally mm -hmm. normal to feel like scared of loving again. And, um, right. but there's also, you, he said, usually where there's guilt, there's anger attached to it in some way, mm -hmm. shape or form. And that for me, it might be, um, you know, in the guilt that I feel, it might be anger that like, why can't I just let myself do this? Mm -hmm. Or it might be anger, mm -hmm. um, that I lost her. Um, but there, whenever there's guilt, he said, there's usually like, um, anger attached to it. That's pretty like common. It might be deep, but there's usually anger attached to the guilt. And, um, that's, that's just been like the hardest thing for me. And I just had, I had a really good conversation with my friend, Jeremy, that lives in Florida. He came out um, a couple weeks ago and we were just talking about it. And he kind of just told me that like, if you like her this much and you, you know, that like, you should, you should allow, you were a good husband. Mm -hmm. You should allow yourself to have feelings for somebody again, that that's mm -hmm. not that's wrong. Good. And right you know, that you're, you're keeping your, you're keeping yourself down right? by being afraid of um, caring about somebody again. And um, because we don't know, we don't know our future, but like, you can't just be scared that she's going to get cancer or that whatever, or that she's going to break my heart or whatever it might be, you know, right, like exactly. you, <clears throat> you can't live that way. And, and fear isn't from God. Right. right. We know that. So um, I kind of just had this like epiphany in talking to him that I was like, yeah, like there's nothing wrong. I was a great husband to her and yeah. I tried to be the best that I could be. I wasn't perfect, but nobody is. And, um, but I, I 
I honored my vows and I would have, I don't care if she was permanently, permanently, um, you know, disabled or whatever. Like I would have loved, of course, I would have loved her. And I told her that, you know, I would have, I would have gotten her a wheelchair and would have gotten a van to drive her everywhere she wants to go and would have put some four wheel drive tires on it so we could go hiking. And yeah, um, but you know, she was what I wanted and I didn't care the condition that she was in. I just wanted to be her husband. And, um, but we have to let that go. And that's Mm -hmm. like the hardest part is like, is dating. You're basically, you know, because we go through these phases of having to let things go. Right. You know, like, you know, getting rid of their stuff. Like you feel guilty about it, but like, Uh you have to let it go. You have to let it go. When, when you're ready, not, you know, not like you have to do it. Like I did where I was just, you know, I, I I couldn't get, I knew I was going to have a hard time getting rid of stuff. So I wanted to get rid of it right off the bat. That's just how I am though. And, um, right. but it does, I know people that have held onto their, um, spouse's belongings for many years and mm-hmm. don't want to get rid of it. And so that doesn't matter, but, but at the point that you decide to get rid of it, that's something you have to let go. Yeah, exactly. And so for me, it was like dating again, like that it's, it was another way that I had to let go of Lacey and it even hurts to say that. Cause I don't want to let go of her, but mm-hmm. I have to. You know, right. I have to, because that, that wasn't the plan for my life anymore from God, you know, mm-hmm. and as much as we wish we could change the, um, outcome, um, in these situations, we can't. And so I I'm saying all this, and this isn't, you know, the most comfortable thing to talk about because mm-hmm. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Um, but I know that the girl I'm dating is a really amazing woman and, um, she deserves me to be my best and right. it's, it's hard to do if I'm, you know, still holding on to what I wish could have mm-hmm. been. And so it's, you know, while it, it's hard to, um, do that, like I'm starting to learn how to do it. I'm learning to tell myself, like, it's okay to let yourself care about somebody again. Right. And that's been challenging, but, um, she's been really good to me and really good to my kids and really understanding. And honestly, like all the things I prayed about, I prayed for somebody that was, you know, going to be understanding with Lacey and, you know, just the many things that I don't need to get into because it's personal, but um, a lot of the things, pretty much everything I think um, that I was praying about, she is. And that's awesome. So yeah, it's been, it's been like, wow, like, I don't know what I'm, waiting for then I don't know why I'm so scared sometimes you know or whatever Mm -hmm. but and she she encourages me to talk about Lacey she loves hearing about her um Mm -hmm. she asks me questions about her um I'll I'll see her looking at pictures of Lacey and smiling or whatever and she doesn't even know that (laughs) but I'm like I've seen it she does now she does now (laughs) she's listening (laughs) but um you know just things like that where I'm just like I'm so grateful yeah that somebody is um wanting to love me again and wanting to love my kids and it's mm-hmm. funny because with my kids There's it's the total opposite, opposite of, of what you're going through yeah like we were dating for like maybe a week or two and mm-hmm. my daughter was already asking me like if I can marry her right. and um you know and and for her don't get me wrong Alexis still goes through a lot with right. um, her mommy we just had a whole night the other night of mm. her crying that she missed mommy Aww, and um, I was up with her like most all of the night and, um, so it's still very much real you know she still yeah. absolutely loves and misses her mommy with all of her heart but um, you know these these kids they they're just with daddy all the time and yeah. They're, they're miss they see other kids with mommy and they, right. they want that they want that in their lives and um so yeah I had to tell my daughter like it doesn't work that way sweetheart I, right. it's like you know and that's led into all kinds of conversations yeah. about like oh my goodness like so wait she's like, wait, wait wait I forgot what brought it up exactly um I think I talked about uh, mommy and I deciding that we were going to give her a little brother and she's like wait 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 <laughs> you guys decide when you're going to have a baby. And I'm like, Oh Oh boy, boy. here we go. Here's the can (laughs) opener. Here's the worm. Go ahead. Open it on up. I was like, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. it is. 
you know, and I, I don't shy away from stuff with her. And she's like, well, how does, I don't get it. How do oh mommies gosh. get a baby in their belly? And I was like, well, most of this conversation will take place when you get a little bit older, yeah. but um, it's a very intimate thing between a husband and wife when they love each other a lot. And um they decide to have a baby. There you go. <laughs> She's, Perfect she for was her like, age. Oh, yeah. that's okay. great. You did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like wiping the sweat off my forehead. <laughs> but anyways, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's sweet. I, I appreciate their love they have and they, they just don't want me to be alone, but they've, uh, I, I really had to have a conversation with them that I'm like, you can't, you can't ask me every time I hang out with her when we're getting married. Cause right. it makes me pretty uncomfortable <laughs> and it makes, me miss, <laughs> makes me miss your mommy a lot and makes mm. me sad. And like, you can't, um, you just can't talk about it like that when it's, if that day comes, it'll be in God's timing and yeah. I will feel like it's right. And she will feel like it's right, but it's, unfortunately it's not up to you guys. And I'm sorry. And she's like, okay, well, if that day comes, can I plan your wedding? I'm oh like, my oh my gosh, She's you're so the cute. sweetest, she you know, is. but, um, I'm like, uh, <laughs> again, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, mm -hmm. if it, if it comes, you know, and, uh, but you know, it's just, there's a lot to this, but I just want to encourage people that, um, you're going to feel a lot of fears when you're ready to start dating again, you're going to feel a lot of fears, a lot of, um, quite possibly anxieties, a lot of guilt. You're going to most likely feel guilt. Mm -hmm. Um, and just go with it because what somebody told me that was very valuable advice to me was whether you do it now or whether you do it in 10 years, you're going to go through this. It's mm -hmm. not like the, it's not like it's going to go away. Right. Um, and that's very true because it feels exactly the same at now than it did at six months of like me feeling guilty for even wanting mm -hmm. to have another wife because Lacey was my world. She was what right. I wanted forever and ever. And I still go through cards and read letters and look at pictures and cry and, right. you know, um, adore her. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, you know, but it's just something that you, when you feel ready, just be prepared that you're going to feel guilt and that's okay. But it's also okay to let go of that guilt. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that's my piece. That's, no, that's good. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions because I'm not yet in a relationship, so I don't have okay. the answers. Maybe we'll do a follow-up one once I've been in one. Fire so, away. <laughs> what has been, so this is really twofold. What has been the like best part about dating again? And then maybe the most challenging. Mm, that's a great question. Thanks. The best part feeling loved again. Mm, yeah. I think, um, getting all emotional, just thinking about it. Cause Aww. it's, um, I missed that a lot. Yeah. I, I missed that so much. Like I, I, I hated doing things alone. Everything I did was alone. Everything was on my shoulders. And so it feels good right. to feel cared about again. Yeah. That's um, awesome. And, uh, to have help, like, you know, mm. you and I have talked about this, that, um, well, you, you reminded me, what, what was my love language again? Acts of service. Acts right? of service. Yeah. You had me do mm -hmm. like a test. I don't remember yep. what it was. But, <laughs> acts of service. So acts yep. of service. So having, um, this really nice girl, like wanting to serve me, I love is, that. you know, mm -hmm. wanting to do whatever she can to help me out, like signing up to help me with things when I have stuff to do, like, it's great. great. Um, and, um, the hardest thing is, I mean, you can hear from the way I talk about her. She's really great. Yeah. Um, but I'd say the hardest thing is that she's not Lacey and that's right. not in any um, comparison thing. Right. It's just that I don't have Lacey anymore. You know, so that's probably the hardest thing, but to be honest with you, I'm, I'm learning to let that go. And so mm -hmm. there, there, once you get past that, there's not a lot of downsides to it. It's, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, getting to go out on a date or, yeah. um, getting to watch a movie with somebody else and not just by myself. Yeah. That's been great. Just getting to sit on the couch and have some snacks and eat a movie with, or eat a movie. <laughs> <laughs> eat a movie. Okay. That's a yummy DVD. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, getting to watch a movie with somebody again, um, Other getting than to like laugh, little kid movies. Yes, 
<laughs> yes. Yes. No Pixar. I'm like, no Pixar. We've actually and... been going through uh, The Chosen. Oh, that's um, cool. Which has been great. We're not very far in it, but. Um... And no more dragon movies? Isn't that what Alexis? No, not is for she me. Still... No, she's into My Little she... Pony now. Oh, she switched. Okay. Yeah, which I like much better. I, I mean, yes. not for me to watch, but just the <laughs> content of it yeah um you know the dragons were she was always talking about dragons and i'd always constantly remind her i'm like you know dragons aren't real right, right. you know because she's like did you know that dragons this yeah her all like, her well, thoughts <laughs> imaginary dragons yeah so that's the fact or whatever but um but yeah it's it's honestly it's been it's been more good than bad and i i, I just so feel good. bad because she is um she has gone through a lot wanting to date me because i've send her for a roller coaster ride that's for sure like I'm like I can't do this okay I miss you I can't do this okay I miss you and she's Mm -hmm. just she's been so great to just be like I just want you to be happy I just want you to be happy and then I'm like well now I want to get back together because that is like a really nice thing (laughs) to say you know I mean not literally like that but you know it's just uh so you will I I would say like it's not going to be like my experience um for everybody um, some people won't be as indecisive as I am or mm-hmm. was or whatever, but, um, just anticipate that it's just not going to be easy. I think is the easiest thing to, or the, excuse me, the, the most consistent thing that I can say is like anticipate that it's not going to be easy. Yes. And, um, and that you're with somebody who's prepared for that. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, you know, let them know, maybe read that excerpt from that Michelle wrote, uh, read in the last episode, mm, Yes, it's which was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like that, like read that to them first and, right. and let them know that like, you know, you're, you're, you're a vessel that's been through a lot and, um, you require a certain amount of understanding mm-hmm. and, and, um, you know, she's been really great at that for me. She's been really, really understanding and, um, just supportive in everything that I say and go through. So, um, if you can find somebody like that, I'm really happy for you. And I would just encourage um, you that when you're ready, like, just don't let any, I put it off for so long because I was just afraid of what people would think. Yeah. And just don't let that be a thing because um, it's your life. You're the one that went through what you went through. Nobody exactly. else went through it. Right. They, they can't even pretend to understand. So right. um, that's my very long answer to your short question. <laughs> no, those are great, great answers. I'm sure they'll help the listeners. So what I want to say about dating too, um, a couple of things have changed. So a lot of us, you know, we were in our twenties last time we dated. Yeah. And so the biggest Before thing, cell phones. <laughs> right. So there's that there's like texting adds a whole different layer that wasn't right. there. Yeah. Um, and then, um, everybody in there, you know, so we're in our forties and I mean, I'm in my twenties again, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whatever in my forties and everybody has baggage, every single person that I've gone on a date with or whatever, because we've had so much more life. Like, yeah. We have our We're own at baggage. the age of baggage. We have baggage. And so just know <laughs> that. And sometimes it's too much baggage, too much. And you're like, bye. <laughs> like, I'm, bye. Can you give us any examples? <laughs> I don't want to throw you on the spot. I'm just yeah, yeah. I just okay. Yeah, I'd love. And if he share. hears it, whatever. So this one guy, um, he just had a lot of baggage, like with a lot, like a lot of kids with a lot of different moms, mm. and it just wasn't for me, like, um, like a lot. And he wasn't truthful in the beginning about how many kids he had, mm. and then later told me, and then like, you know, just just a lot of things that were like red flag, red flag, red flag, you know, and just too much. Like I can handle some stuff, but you also know, like I can know within a minute of meeting somebody, if like there's no potential or there could be potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, I not like, I know for sure right away. Um, and then the other thing, everyone says they're a Christian, like literally everyone, um, like, cause I wouldn't even Mm. go on a date if, unless it said Christian, well, they like to say that and very few, um, there was one, one guy and he's super nice. We just didn't end up having, we went out a couple of times, super nice guy. I just, it just wasn't there, but, um, he was actually a Christian, but the rest of them literally like one guy, I know he's not listening to this. 
he uh, <laughs> I could sell you that so I'm not worried it was actually like one of my very first dates you know what I'll just tell you all about it because it was pretty bad um it, so he like when I asked him I'm like so tell me you know and I'm not judging but I would like a little more depth I was like tell me about your relationship with God he's like uh I know he's real and I go to church sometimes and I, like literally I was like okay, well, Jesus is the most important thing to me. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then it was just like, I was talking about Luke and he wasn't sensitive. And then it was like, everything was about him. Like no questions about me. And I can't stand that happened on several dates. I'm like, really? Like, I can't stand that. Like you need to be interested in who I am. Yeah. And, yeah, for sure. And it was just, that date was really, I can laugh about it now. Cause he's like one of those narcissist like i can talk about i know i can tell already (laughs) oh my gosh i think i told you about that one he's the guy that had the shirt that said i love hot oh yeah yeah that guy Mm, yeah so one of my i could have told you that right off the bat (laughs) like anybody who would wear that shirt and take a photo in that shirt never mind i'm sorry that sounds mean you know what i i know i saw you have a new girlfriend i'm happy for you so yay if you're listening which i'm sure you're not but um (laughs) it was just such an awkward like and i also said i wasn't going to be physical and that like weeds out people really quick Mm -hmm. and um and then he asked me again yeah and i said um if you're good with being friends because that's where i'm at and he said no i have enough friends i'm looking for a relationship so anyone who's not willing to be my friend first (laughs) Like you're not, you don't really care about me. He just wanted relationship, like physical. I'm pretty. Yeah. I was going to say we could translate that into another language pretty easily. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So that was a bad, bad date. So, wow. So, well, let me ask, let me ask you the same question, but in a different context, what are you most looking forward to in dating? Mm. And what are you most afraid of? Oh, good. So this is good. We're going to like hit all the audience, like with these two (laughs) different things. I'm most looking forward to having a companion again, kind of what you're talking about is the best part. Like I would love to like cuddle and watch a movie and like Mm -hmm. go out to dinner. And like, um, you know, Luke wasn't able to do a lot of like adventuresome things because he Mm -hmm. had his leg amputated, all his things. So what's really important to me is someone who is fit, who likes to hike, run, like all this stuff, who wants to travel with me, like, that's what I want. Like, I want to live this, this part of my life. I didn't get to not Luke's fault, but I did not get to, we didn't get to go on dates a lot because yeah. of his pain. I mean, we did, but not as much as I'd like to, um, we didn't get to do a lot of stuff. And so I want someone that I can be completely active with and we can play tennis and like every, everything that I want to do that I never got to do. And I believe that's going to happen because God promised me on that grief retreat, I will redeem and restore everything you lost. And so I know, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. So I'm super excited about that. And just like, yeah, feeling loved again Mm -hmm. and cherished and like all those things that you miss when you're single (laughs) and doing life with something, having a partner again, like, especially it's interesting and I'll, I'll, I'm not cutting you off. I'll let you answer the other part of the question, but it's especially interesting to be it's one thing to be single. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nother thing to be single after you've been married, after you've shared a life with somebody. Yeah, it's totally different. It's totally different. It's Uh not the same, you know, because you're not looking for somebody to date again. At least, Mm -hmm. you know, I know with you and I, we've talked about it. We were on the same page. Like, I I didn't care about dating. I could have dated enough people. I got offers. He is a player. (laughs) <laughs> definitely the furthest thing from that I wasn't looking for that though I didn't want that I had no interest in that what I wanted what I want is to be married again you know right. and me too like when you cherish a marriage that's what you are looking for right. so it's interesting because when you're in your 20s you're just like, looking to eh. date and see where it goes exactly. you know but at this stage in life you're like I'm not I don't have enough life left to like yes. play around, you know, and, and you have kids especially, to and all that. Right. Mm-hmm. And especially when you've been through what we've been through and mm-hmm. you see how fragile life is Yeah, that, you know, anything yes. can happen at any time, you know? And so it's like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a fling kind of person, you know? Mm-mm. So anyways, yeah. and I'm sorry. So uh, continue so please. Cause that's, that's the, the thing that I'm excited about. Um, I was fearful of getting really into let's just take this scenario. For example, the, the friend that I'm talking to, let's say we take it to the next level and decide to date and it's long distance. So that's already got a lot of challenges and like get really invested in something and get my heart broken. That's my fear and go through grief again, or 
he dies. One of those. So those yeah. are my, my two fears. Um, it's basically the same loss. I don't want loss again, but I always say this, it's better to have loved and lost than to never loved at all. Like I would do it all over with Luke. And I feel the same thing with a future love that I want to experience it again, even because, I mean, we think about it, somebody's going to die again. If we like, even if we grow old, someone's going to die first, probably unless mm-hmm. Jesus comes back, please. Hallelujah. But mm-hmm. unless that, you know, like someone's going to die. And so I've had to think about that, but I have to be okay with that. Like this is, you know, and I really do believe in the dating, like you've got to give it to God. Like I kind of went through a little bit of like looking for it. And then when I didn't look for it, like, at least now I have this friendship that's blossoming that I didn't look for that came to me pretty much because of Mark Zuckerberg. So, (laughs) um, like, and you know, God putting him in my life years ago. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my biggest fear is loss, but I'm, it's worth it. I believe because I have experienced love before, as you have, that it's worth it. It's worth it to risk that to have that companionship. And so I I believe that there might be some people listening who are scared, but think about like fear is not from God. It's false evidence appearing real. It's like, you're, you're going through all these scenarios, scenarios in your head and it hasn't even happened. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Don't borrow trouble. We talked about this last time and anxiety Mm -hmm. kind of goes along with the same thing. We have to release that side of us to God. I trust you. I trust you. And it's scary, like getting in a new relationship. You don't, you don't know them. Like, you know, your spouse, you know, you knew like Luke and I could be like, he's like, we're on the same wave. Like we could like, he could think something. I know it, you know, it's just Mm -hmm. like everything, you knew how they, they ate and how they slept and how they did this and how every little thing. And so you're learning a whole new person, which can be scary because you don't actually fully know someone like till you get married and then you really learn everything. So it's scary. Like that's where you also have to trust God. Like you know, praying for peace as you enter, even in my friendship that I'm in right now, God, give me peace. If this is right. If it's not like, let me know, Yeah. you know, and just praying the whole way through God, show me, open my eyes. I've prayed this a lot in this situation, open my eyes to the truth. What is the truth about this person? And like, so that I can see that and praying and he's been able to give me peace about the situation. And I, so I I just want to make sure that listeners know that that's so important to pray over your new relationship. Absolutely. Like, and pray with, pray with your new person. Yes. Yes. Because you really want to know, um, where their heart stands. And, um, you know, because for me, I, I feel fortunate that, um, the girl who approached me, who I've been dating, um, and I'm just not naming her name for her own privacy. Um, but she approached me at church. Uh, So I already know her and know a lot of people that know her. Mm -hmm. And so that's helpful. But if you're meeting somebody in the dating world and you don't know about them or they're, you know, nobody can vouch for them, so to speak, like pray with them and, and really see where their heart is. Do devotionals together. Mm -hmm. Um, pray about that person in your private time and ask God to speak to you about them. And yes. Um, you know, make sure you feel peace about it. But one of the things that you said that, uh, really brought me back was one of the, one of the main reasons for the first, whatever it was, I don't know the time frame, five, six months, whatever it was that I, I thought I was going to be alone forever. I I didn't want to, I was no, I had no interest in, um, you know, dating. I didn't want to be alone, but I had no interest in dating because Mm -hmm. of the reasons you mentioned. I was like, Lacey and I knew everything about each other. I don't want to get to know somebody again. Like I don't want to invest that much again to potentially lose. It was what I was thinking at that time. I was like, you know, Lacey knew like the back of her hands that I didn't like beans. (laughs) She didn't, (laughs) she didn't wear corduroy because she knew it like made my arm hair stand up. Like I can't, I can't stand corduroy. Like just these different things things that she Mm -hmm. knew how I liked my food. She knew like how I liked my coffee, like just everything, everything. Yeah. It was, you know, I mean, you spend that much time and you, you know, we knew how each other prayed and we picked up each other's traits and laughs and comedy style and just everything. And it was like, gosh, like I invested, we invested everything into each other. Yeah. And then you're just like starting over from scratch. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And so if you're feeling that way now, but you're also feeling like, you know, you don't want to be alone, like where I was at. 
and if this if you relate to this at all, I guess I would say, um, just give it time. And probably all that means is just you're not ready yet. And, yeah. um, you know, okay. when you when you feel OK, when you feel ready to get to know somebody again, um, go for it, you know, and, mm-hmm. and don't don't be a, don't be afraid of it. And I don't know, I guess learn from us, you know, from mm-hmm. the things we're sharing with you that we've been through because they're they're very real. And I wish at that time that I heard somebody talking about this stuff. Right. It's not talked about. Because, well, all you hear about in these widow groups, you know, like the one you and I met in, um, was that a Christian one? No, it wasn't. No, young and widowed with children. Oh Mm -hmm. my gosh. The things, the things you read about and hear about, I'm like, I don't even want to be part of this world. No, I I don't even want to be labeled, you know, because there's like a stigma sort Mm -hmm. of that you get labeled with when you're widowed in the, Mm -hmm. in the world that, um, I didn't even want to be part of and uh, hearing the things that these people were posting about dating and yeah, going out and doing their, their thing yeah. or whatever. It was just like, Oh my gosh, like I, this isn't me. This isn't advice for me, you know, because mm-hmm. they're like, Oh, just, well, I shouldn't say on air some of the things that I heard people saying, but you know, just basically encouraging people to just go out and hook up with somebody and right. just see what it feels like. And I'm like, no, like, no. this is not me, Mm-mm. you know? Mm-mm. And um you know, just bad advice, I guess would be the best yeah. way to, yeah. to sum so it up. So I would say we never heard anything like this. Yeah, like, we never heard anything that's like this. Why I've been so passionate about like we need to do this episode because it's not publicly talked about, at least in a Christian podcast. Right, right. And so we wanted to share our experience. Um, something else I wanted to share is, you know, other people may give you advice. Um, I had a friend and we've talked about it. So she's, you know, she hears it. It's cool. We've talked about why I didn't like that. She said to me, um, you know, if I I think if my husband died, I don't think I'd ever want to get married again. And I said, well, you don't know (laughs) because you've never experienced it. She's like, you know, like my husband's trained and like, I wouldn't want to start over kind of the same thing. And I was just like, you don't. And I was very firm with her and she did apologize. (laughs) I'm like, you don't know what it feels like. And so don't let other people stop you. If you feel ready and you have peace about it, go for it in whichever Avenue you feel like you want to do it and don't feel bad and let go of what other people think. So what I'm struggling with and don't know if they listen or not, but I, you know, and I'm not quite there. So when I am in a relationship, I will reach out to my in-laws. Um, but I'm struggling with, that's hard for me because I don't want them to think it means I loved Luke any less. So hopefully if if they're listening, they know that. And when it is time, if I do enter into a relationship, which could be very possible soon, um, I will talk to them and, but I have to let go of like, what are they going to think? What are other people going to think that are related to him or good friends with him? Those are the, yeah, I think anybody, can really, cause I know, you know, you and I have gotten to know each other really well and I know a lot yep. of your stories and stuff. And, um, you stood by your husband's side faithfully and yes. you would have kept standing by his yep. side. Mm-hmm. It wasn't your choice. It wasn't your call. You prayed, you did everything you could, mm-hmm. um, to keep him in your life, to keep yeah. him as your husband. And it, it just was beyond your control. And, um, it's been an extremely respectable amount of time. Yes. Um, and uh, I think, honestly, that people would want you to be happy. That's what I've experienced. All yeah. the people that I was so afraid of yeah. um, telling or knowing people from church, my in-laws, whoever, whoever it might be, um, everybody has been way more loving and understanding than mm-hmm. I would have even imagined, like close family friends of Lacey's that I've, I've told about it. And I was, you know, unsure how they were going to react. And they're like, when you're ready, like you do that, I'd be so mm-hmm. happy for you. If you found somebody like that'd be, you deserve that. You were such a good husband. And I'm like, wow. Like I was not yeah. expecting that. Res- I was expecting like, oh, wow, really? Like you're dating somebody. Yeah. Not everybody knows, but it's because I don't talk to them intimately, not because I've been hiding, right. you know? Which I have a question for you. Um, how come you don't want to be public, like on social media about it? Uh, because it's just, to me, it doesn't mean that I, like Facebook doesn't determine whether I'm in a relationship or not. Well, I know. Um, I'm just curious. Like to me, that's, it's just never like, uh, it's never been a, a thing to me to like, oh, I better put it on social media <laughs> now or whatever. Like, but most of the people that I'm actually friends with, like, no. 
you know? Right. And so it's not like it's a, uh, it's not like I'm hiding her. No, you know? I mean, we no, sit totally. together at church. We come right. together, we go together. Um, you know, I've had friends over and she's here or whatever. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's not like a secret or anything, but I just, I don't, I've never felt the need to like change my Facebook status or whatever, you know, it just, it's not important to me. Um, but it's, it's also not something I'm intentionally not doing. Right. It's People just like, like a, what I'm just not a big social media. Right. You're not like person, a big so poster. So it makes, yeah. I was just curious because I feel like I'm excited and like, I want to, if I get to this place with this person, like I want to put it on social media, but there's also a reason because it's somebody that, um, like I knew from college and a lot of people that are not in my daily life, like mm-hmm. would know both of us too. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a cool story. And, um, so I was just curious about that because, you know, everybody- no, I get, I get why you're curious, but for me, it's like, I'm just, it just comes down to like, I'm more of a private person. That's true. like, you don't are. get me yeah. wrong. I'm, I'm pretty open with like sharing except my for feelings the podcast. sometimes, <laughs> except for the podcast. <laughs> right. Um, I'm pretty open about sharing my feelings and stuff like that on Facebook, but that's more for me. That's like, I need an outlet. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I'll post these, you know, it's pretty rare, but um, I'll, I'll I have no problem sharing my feelings right on Facebook and stuff like that. But um, that's more of like a, I I've found that writing is an outlet for me. Yes, to kind of get how I'm feeling out, and um, and then as I reread it later, I can like analyze it and stuff. And um, so yeah, I mean, I guess. But other aside from that, it probably sounds contradictory. But I am a, a pretty private person. I just don't. I don't care about people getting to know, uh, you know, cause I feel like a lot of that is like, I, I learned from, I learned a lot from, from Lacey dying, um, as yeah. far as social media goes, is that, I mean, people were coming out of the woodworks to post about her. Right. And, oh I my get gosh, my friend. My right. Friend is, and I'm like, did you even know that? <laughs> right. I get it. Yeah. And so it's like, for me, it's like, people want to have the inside scoop people want to have the next thing to talk about. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to feed that, you know, I don't want people, Oh, did you hear Mark's dating? So like, I just, I don't know. It's just not a, I tell the people who I want to know. Right. And well, let the chips fall where they may. (laughs) Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's good that we are different in that way because some people can relate to you and some people can relate to me. And for me, it's too, like when I, you know, find this, hopefully this relationship, I just like, I would want to tell people, like, it's just something that I want to do. So it's good to kind of like hear both perspectives sure, yeah. on that. And I'm sure, I'm sure that there's um, some people listening right now that are, I mean, aside from our viewers who don't know me, but I know that there are some people that listen to this that know me. I'm sure they're just now hearing for the first time that I'm dating someone, but I'm okay with that. But I, my heart wants to help people. And that's the whole point Yes, of exactly. why I wanted to do this podcast. And so, yeah, this topic isn't something I was, you know, super comfortable talking about publicly, but when you, you know, talked to me about it and um, said that you think it would be really helpful for people, I, I thought about that and I was like, you know what, it would. And mm-hmm. we have the experience to share with, and I know a lot of people have more experience than I do and could probably do a lot better of a job than we have of covering this topic. But um, I just wanted to put some stuff out there that, yeah, so it's, it's funny that I'm a private person and yet here I am with sharing, sharing this stuff with, with people from all around the world. But, um, okay. you know, that's just, that's how it is. And that's how I feel about it is just that like, I want to help people. And, um, so that's why I'm open to talking so vulnerably and open, um, yeah, on, I mean, on I this think... podcast, cause I want to help people. And I know what a, dark and lonely road Mm. uh, this has been at times yeah and I wished that I had somebody covering the topics that we cover um because it's it would have been very helpful it would have been very helpful to just even hearing people hear this you know I met uh before I met you there was one other girl that um reached out to me from that same widowed group that Mm -hmm. I was chatting with for a while and um, we became close friends and um she had a totally different story than mine though. Um, and just for the sake, even I'm not mentioning her name, but even just for right. the sake of her privacy, I won't mention any of the things that happened to her, but it was just a very different death of her husband than, than mm-hmm. I experienced. And um, so meeting you was like, oh my gosh, yeah. like it was just this connection where I was like, yes, yes, yes that's the same yeah, thing. Lacey. Those so are the cool. same medications uh-huh. Lacey was on. That was the same thing Lacey was going through. And 
Um, so that helped me a lot. And so that's the reason why I wanted to do this podcast with you is to give other people that feeling that yes. others understand. And that's the same reason why I want other widows to come on our show and widowers to come on yes. our show and, and share their stories because everybody's story is different. And I just um, love the idea of this being a, a community of people that can learn from one another and, yeah. and kind of get through this by, of course, by God's grace, but to encourage people to, to go to God um, mm-hmm. in this, you know, so anyways, it's not on the topic of dating. But I I don't even know how I got here, but (laughs) talking about being vulnerable, all the things. Right, 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 right. And I think it's it's important. Like that is why we are vulnerable and open. And I feel like we've come a long ways even since the beginning because we want to help others. And we feel like if we're open, God can use us more. And, Mm -hmm. um, people relate to authentic if we were just like robots and like, everything's great. And we, you know, dating people and it's fine, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Like that would be real, you know? And so our hope and our prayer is that this helps you, you know, Mm -hmm. whoever's listening and, um, as you embark on your dating journey or you don't, I want you to know there's nothing wrong with it. Like there's no timetable in grief. You are right. If you date, you are right. If you don't date, it does not matter. And I feel like I really strongly, like somebody needs to hear that. Like maybe mm-hmm. they've, they've been told. I felt it's that too. too. That's weird. Yeah. Like really strongly, like maybe they've been told it's too soon, or maybe they've been the other way. Like, are you going to date again? And like, it's okay. And God has you wherever you're at in this moment, at this second, he has you there for a reason. Mm. And he has your future lined up perfectly. If you're supposed to be married again or date again, he's going to bring that person to you. You'll meet at some, he'll, he'll direct the paths. Like it really comes down to trust. Do we trust God? Like, Mm -hmm. do we trust him? He brought us through this horrible experience. We are not where we thought it would be. Do we trust him with our future? Do we trust him? And that's where I've had to be like, yes, God, I trust you. And on the flip side of that too, if, if you, if your choice is to not date again, yeah, God will take care of you in that. Exactly. And like you're going to be fine. You don't have to do it just because other people are telling you to. Exactly. Um, and like Michelle saying that whatever is right for you is right for you. And I found that so interesting that you said that right when you said it, Michelle, because I just felt something stirring inside of me wow. that I was like, oh, there's That's somebody that. listening right now <laughs> that just needs to hear this. And yep. Um, oh, it was really interesting that you said it when you did, cause That's I was so feeling cool. it in that exact moment where I was like, whoa, somebody is like sitting there just going, oh yeah, like this is okay. Whatever mm-hmm. I choose is okay. Yes. I mean, it's your life, you know? Yeah. That's so good. So good. I felt it so strong. I had like goosebumps. Like I got to say this, like somebody needs to know this. So I, I really hope that reached the right person or people or whoever, Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, is there anything else? I mean, I'm sure we could do another episode another time when we've had more experience in this world. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to say on the topic of dating? Um, Be careful. That's, Mm -hmm. that's on my heart to say, particularly to women, be careful Mm -hmm. because there are um, a lot of men that are very willing to take advantage of your vulnerability and it breaks my heart. Um, but it's very real. It's very real. Um, just as a man, knowing a lot of men, like I'm not saying I, I know a bunch of bad dudes or anything, but I'm just saying that like women, I've seen so much stuff where you just yeah. have to be so careful. There's so many scammers out there. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Where when they see widow in your profile, oh, yeah. like you are a target. Yep. And you have to be careful with um you know, just be mindful. And I would just say like, pray about each person um, because there's a lot of very good actors out there Mm -hmm. and they will have you falling in love with them until you drain your bank account for them. Um, Cause they'll have some swindle, some scam, some story. I know a lot of you are are very intelligent and I'm not, you know, implying that you're not smart enough to figure out a scam, but just that um, you're, we're all very vulnerable in this walk Mm -hmm. and Um, and I only say particularly women because women, uh, tend to be more of a target. Mm -hmm. And, and from what I've seen in all these different widow groups, I've seen a lot of people posting about how they got completely scammed. I have seen men post that they got scammed. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just seems to happen to women more often. Um, and I don't know the reason for that, but, um, 
that just seems to be the case. Would you agree with that? It's, yeah. I yeah, just, definitely. I don't, I just don't want to be like anybody seems like I'm being presumptive. That, no, no, like, no. You know, women are being duped more no. for any reason other than just that's the truth. I would also say if you don't, um, you know, know them, like you, you know, you, you knew your person. I know my person. Like if you have nobody that can vouch for them, do a background check, not even joking. Mm. Um, whitepages.com is a great <laughs> resource. No, seriously. Like, it's like, you can go there for free. If you want more information, it's like $5. If you want a full, but I, I don't get paid by them, by the way, <laughs> it's like it. I've used whitepages.com many times in many situations. Plug in and, our sponsors. <laughs> right. I wish we got paid, but anyways, <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. Like you want to know something about them. Sure. And if you notice like on Facebook that you have a mutual friend with this person, I have done this many times. You contact them and you ask them about the person. Mm -hmm. Like you want, if you can find someone to vouch for them, that's good. Rather than someone who comes out of nowhere, you know, nothing, they could be completely lying. So, and listen to, if you, we don't want to be like scaring you guys, but just, we care about your safety. Like if you feel any red flags, don't ignore them. I'm not saying that you're always right when you feel a red flag, but don't ignore it. If you do like keep, keep an eye on that and don't just, um, don't just go with the fact that it finally feels good to not be alone anymore. Um, you know, just don't be so vulnerable that you fall for something. Hi, Alexis. Right. Sorry. Exactly. Sorry. Well, we. I'm sorry. One second. It's fine. About what? Are you almost done recording? Yes, we're almost done. I'll be out soon. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Close the door, please. Thank you. So sorry i don't remember what we're saying um, oh just, uh, just about not being vulnerable oh yes let's be smart and not be vulnerable and yeah i think that's good i think we covered a lot yeah um, i feel really really good about the experiences that god has given us to share with others and mm-hmm. um yeah so would you like to close this out in prayer i would love to yes awesome father god you're such a good God. You're so graceful and loving to us. And, um, it's, it's hard. We don't always understand your plans. Um, but I just, I pray right now that anybody who's feeling lonely as Michelle and I both really understand Mm -hmm. that you would, um, just give them hope and encouragement. And, um, that for anybody that wants to stay single Lord, that you comfort them in that Mm -hmm. choice. And, um, for anybody who is looking for a future spouse, um, or just trying to get over the fact of like trying to date again, um, that you would bring whoever it is to them quickly. Um, and so that they don't have to feel alone anymore. And I, I just pray for everyone's heart in here. That's listening, um, that you would comfort them in whatever they're, uh, feeling like they want for their future and that you would, uh, completely remove any fears from their heart about Mm -hmm. the circumstances surrounding them looking to um, be happy again in the future Um, and that you would just give them great peace. Mm -hmm. Um, And I thank you, Lord, for just always being there for us and that we can just cry out to you anytime. It is such a gift that we take for granted um, because we really don't understand what it means to be able to speak to the God of the universe at any given moment in time and we are grateful though. And we're grateful for the blood of Jesus. And it's in mm-hmm. his name that we pray to you, Father. Amen. Amen. So um, one last thing. So Michelle and I uh, have been doing this podcast for a while. I think this is our 25th episode. Yeah. Episode and um, five, yeah. we have been doing this because we love helping people. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you feel led to sponsor us in any way, We have set up a Patreon account for those that are interested. Um, It is, if you go to Patreon, you go to Widowed Too Soon, and um, you can send us a small donation there if you feel led to do that. Um, We would be very grateful that we could continue this ministry um, as best as we can. And Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, uh, that is at Patreon, and it's Widowed Too Soon. If you feel led to sponsor us, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And there's so, also a link below in the show notes. I will oh put yeah, a direct you. link. So either way. So just to wrap it up, you know, again, we really appreciate you guys being here. And again, if you would like to be a guest on our podcast, we love having guests. We've had two so far and it's been amazing. And 
you know, um, for example, Lisa with um, Widowed by COVID, so many responses to people who had lost their spouses to COVID Mm. were able to relate to her, which we could never reach that audience. And so you, whatever your story is, there's going to be something in it that's going to relate to someone that we can't relate to. And so, um, if you feel comfortable or you feel led to do this, please let us know. We would be happy to interview you and have you share your story. So just consider it, think about it, pray about it. Um, we'd love to have you. So you can yeah. let us know, um, by emailing us at widowed too soon M at gmail.com, or we have Instagram where you can go to widow too soon underscore, send us a message. We also have a Facebook group, um, Widow Too Soon, I believe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We have all the links below. And we would love to hear from you. If you really liked this episode, we'd love it if you give it a little bing, five stars on (laughs) Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And also YouTube, go see it. We've got, you can see our beautiful faces if you go to YouTube (laughs) and see what we actually look like and watch some of those episodes. They're not all there, but some of them. So I think that's all my stuff to share. That's most of the stuff. Yeah, we've we've gained some great friends too. (laughs) Yes, for sure. From this, which is awesome. Um, And so also like, if you don't feel comfortable being on air, but you want to share your story, yeah. Like you can send it to us if you feel led to just type out your story, if that's more comfortable for you and you're comfortable with us sharing it on air and talking about it. Um, I, I think we would be willing to do that too. You know I mean? Yes, We'd rather have sure. you as a guest, but um, you know, we would, nothing, yeah. I've had some, we've had some, um, I, I've heard some amazing testimonies. One of them mm-hmm. I think of, and I, I think she'd be comfortable with me using her name. I, we've talked about it briefly, but there's a, a girl, Linnea, mm-hmm. that, her testimony was just so beautiful, right. um, but she didn't feel comfortable sharing it on air, which I totally understood and just said, if you ever do, let us know. But yeah, um, if you just want to share your story with somebody, if you don't feel comfortable with us reading on, our, on air, that's fine too. But um, if you just want to share your story with somebody, it might be therapeutic for you. Please, please do so. Like yeah. we'd love to read it and, um, you know, just hear about what you've been going through and how God's been helping you. Yes. So anyways, I feel like we could do a whole episode about that. I know. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that's it. So thank you guys for listening and I hope you have a fabulous week and we'll be back next week. Have a great day. Word. Word up.